way, up this way. So current flows from, from minus polarity to plus. So if I draw a circuit, and I show my polarities, when I show my current flow in the circuit, we know current moves this way. That's what we call electron flow. Electron flow. <clears throat> There's another kind of made up current that goes the other way. That's what your book uses. It goes like that. The opposite. Can I see your book? So, in this book, if you look at your book, on the front of this it says Principles of Electric Circuits, Conventional Current Version. You can buy this same book that says Electron Flow Version. So usually in engineering and higher courses, they, uh, they, they, uh, they use what we call conventional current flow, and that's what we use in, in here. Now you may wonder the reason why. Well, it's really not a big deal. You can use either one, as so long as you're consistent. But does anybody see any problem with electron flow, which is the green arrow? It's going from negative to positive. Uh-huh. You hear what he said? He says going from negative to positive. What's the problem with that? Well, remember, this is really physics. This is physics. And it looks like, if you look at that green arrow, it looks like something's going from a lower potential to a higher potential, and not the other way. That would be the equivalent of water running uphill. You ever seen that before? Yeah. And the problem with that is the way Benjamin Franklin, when he chose the electron to be negative and the proton to be positive, if he had chosen it the other way, then it would make it fit with the rest of physics. But, so they made up this current kind of as a patch. It's all right, we know electrons going from minus to positive. We're going to show it the other way. Conventional current. So big boys and big girls use conventional current flow, and that's what we'll use. That makes sense? So we have a graphic for voltage. We have a graphic for current. And you now know from lab <coughs> resistance. How do I show that? It looks like a, like a saw blade, doesn't it? Yeah. We'll put an R there. And you know various forms of that. We talked about that in lab. We talked about, we talked about this one. What's that one? What is it? Potentiometer. Potentiometer. Mm -hmm. What's this one? That's a rear static or variable resistor. I don't know if we talked about this one. What do you think that one is? Anybody ever seen that before? Oh. It stands for wavelength of, of light. Of light. And uh, so this, this, is a, this, is a, this is called a photoresistor. Photoresistor. Here's a resistor I can adjust. Here's a fixed resistor I can adjust. How do you think this one works? Yeah, light hits it, and then the resistance varies in accordance to how much light hits the resistor. There's also something called a thermal resistor. How does that work? Heat changes the resistor. So we got all kinds of devices we can look up once we know the basic. So what I'm really interested in is that first one, because what I want to be able to do <coughs> is put together what's called a circuit. So I might take something like this, or any one of the three over there, and hook it up to a resistor or a resistance. I show these wires. I label this, how many ohms it is. I put the polarity here. I put how many volts it is. And then I call that a schematic or a diagram, circuit diagram. So one of the things that I'm going to now look at when I grade your homework, when I look at your quizzes, when I look at any material that you have to turn in, I want you to represent every problem with the schematic diagram. So I'm gonna to look to see how you do that in grade your accordingly. So when you wanna represent a source of EMF, you gotta use one of these. When you wanna represent a current, you're gonna use this. And when you wanna represent a resistor or resistance, you're gonna use this or one of the forms of that. Because that's our roadmap in here. And as you go on, especially if you're EET, you'll understand more and more devices like transistors and diodes and IC chips, this keeps coming. And you'll have this really big circuit that you can sit down and kind of mentally work your way through before you ever hook it up in the lab. Okay? So get used to going the circuit diagrams. We'll, we'll practice that today.